the migrant crisis. It's becoming more and more transparently absurd. Record number of arrivals, nearly all of them economic migrants, not refugees, free cash, free health care, free accommodation. It went from four star hotels kind of out on the edge of nondescript towns. Now they're in prime tourist areas in town centers, five star hotels in some cases, even talk of putting them on cruise ships. And then we had this story the other day, which I know you covered. Our own homeless population now being kicked out of accommodation to house illegal Mm. migrants. Tell us where this was Mm. and what happened. And uh, yes, I mean, one of the problems we have with all these stories, I've, I've also covered some positive stories uh, that uh, inevitably happened as well. The number of hotels uh, in Lincolnshire and other places who have been uh, rebelling against uh, this uh, deal. Essentially, for those who don't know, the Home Office using a private company, Serco, that have massive contracts with the government. And they, they are in charge of going to these hotels and taking over and giving them a lot of cash. Uh, for this and you literally have uh, these examples that you mentioned you've got from now it's reached Cornwall which is like it's not even close to Kent and yeah uh, you've so you've got the, the linkage side the Kent side so there are a number of places including Kent that uh, and so Mansfield as you mentioned in terms of the homelessness Mansfield which is in the Midlands uh, the member of parliament for Mansfield a uh, good friend of mine Ben Bradley raised this issue uh, a couple of days ago about the fact that uh, people, when we say homeless, obviously we, there are different categories. This is These are the people who are waiting in the queue to get a house. So they've been in temporary accommodation and they've been kicked out so that we could uh, make way for more space for Albanians and others uh, who are just coming here and basically are entitled. And the, the, now we can say they're entitled. It's no longer just us saying words because we saw them a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, when they came to Westminster in London, outside Parliament, protesting for their rights. I'm not really sure how that works, but they were demanding uh, to be treated uh, not just as normal citizens in the country, but they wanted more stuff, more Domino's pizzas and more uh, five star hotels. They complained about the food quality. And this is a big problem that we're currently facing. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know what the food quality is like in Albania, but I'm (laughs) guessing in a pretty decent four star hotel in the United Kingdom, it would probably come up to par with Albanian food. But yeah, as you mentioned, these homeless people, our own people, they go through the process, they get on waiting lists, they get accommodation, and then a a group of men rock up in a boat from Albania and they get kicked out. As he said, it was MP Ben Bradley who brought attention to this. He said, quote, they have turfed out residents who were already in there for temporary accommodation and who have presented themselves as homeless. They are gone. They are presumably back out on the street, some of them. The other thing I noticed, Maya, was... This hotel in Mansfield, where this happened, was unnamed. And we had a report a few days ago. The Refugee Council in the United Kingdom is calling on British lawmakers not to disclose the names of migrant hotels to the general public, (laughs) citing safety concerns. Now, given the behavior of some of these migrants, and I'm thinking of the incidents in Standish near Wigan, where a woman, 37-year-old woman, was raped at night on the street by one of these migrants staying in the migrant hotel. They're Mm -hmm. harassing and filming the local girls at the school, recording their PE lessons, sexually harassing them when they walk home from school. I mean, don't we, as the British public, have a right to know where these migrants are being housed? And they talk about safety concerns. Whose safety concern is the most pressing? The overwhelmingly young men staying at the hotels or the resident population in the immediate vicinity being affected by all this. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. First things first, when they say um, we shouldn't disclose the, the information of the hotels, well, soon enough, that will be redundant because every single hotel will be filled uh, with migrants. So every hotel will be a migrant hotel. So we don't have to disclose <laughs> the actual details. But sad, the sad thing is you said it uh, because uh, they say, well, we don't want people to put pressure on the migrants or staying there temporarily. But what about the safety of our own kids and our own people? And, and, and whether we disclose the information or not, those uh, dodgy migrants who are going to go out there and cause uh, a lot of trouble and crime, they're going to do it anyway. So it's probably best to have some sort of scrutiny. It's, pro- it's uh, one of the issues with Ben Bradley, the MP for Mansfield, said that we didn't even know. We as MPs, we as local councillors, the local authorities that, you know, the actual elected politicians, I don't want, for example, just me and you to know for the sake of it, but at least have someone like Ben Bradley in that area to know so that they could actually raise some concerns. And um, so we, we don't know how to, how can we keep that 
little girl who's going to school safe if they don't even know that there's a hotel that's full of migrants? And by the way, just quick to add, uh, there's a lot of uh, debate around uh, or why we should care about illegal uh, this issue and tackle illegal migration. And you've got some softies, some like semi-conservative Tories, and oh, the ones who say they're on the right of the Tory party who still say, well, the priority is to make sure that we dist- uh, we restrict the benefit system for them. That's not the problem. You know, there, there's so many issues with it. But the problem that we now have is, one, national security is not being talked about. There's so many Iranians who are using the small boats to come to Kent, and they are still linked to the Iranian regime, and they're coming here and causing trouble on the streets of London. That's one issue. And secondly, let's talk about the soul of the country, the actual identity of the country. Inevitably, if you bring big waves, it will change the face of the country. It will change the behavior of the country. Just, it just everybody needs to calm down, basically. <laughs> what I found quite funny even though i live here in this kind of area is this announcement that because of all the problems in inner cities in towns where these migrants are congregating outside hotels they're now going to spread them out to the countryside and in fact macron in france announced a similar policy and all the farmers were in uproar saying no we don't we don't want this diversity in our backyard but now in the uk they're going to put these migrants if this plan goes ahead in the rural countryside areas some of which are conservative, but a lot of which, as you know, Maya, are kind of Lib Dem. They vote for the diversity and then they live somewhere like I do in the Cotswolds, which is generally 98% white. So they're going to get a taste of the diversity they voted for, it seems. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because until a couple of years ago, a few years ago, they were saying, oh, some Brexit voters and some people who are right wing in small villages who are basically white, why are they so concerned and worried and paranoid about uh, migration? Like, well, because five years later, it's going to reach there as well. <coughs> so those natives were absolutely spot on to be paranoid a couple of years ago because it's actually happening. Secondly, you're right, it's, it's one of the, the, the problems that we're currently facing with the, the narrative. This could be a very, very crucial moment in British politics in the next election, uh, because um, all parties, the main parties, uh, they, they're going to be essentially triggering each other. So the, the Lib Dem areas, the, 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 the conservative areas, the Labour areas. And if an alternative sound a right-wing party and there are some hopes that reform uk could basically get some good household names and create some sort of a, a mechanism for that this could be a crucial moment for a party like reform uk to actually come and steal a lot of votes and they are saying that if Nigel Farage, for example comes back they could get 25 percent of the vote in the next election a, a big upset is needed at this point not just a, a generic uh, like a 2014 election when UKIP did quite well, but with no actual power. Uh, it's, it's time uh, for the, the actual establishment to feel that slap in the face, basically. And I'm going to ask you about that Farage issue later as, it, as regards Brexit, which just came out over the past yeah. 24 hours. Uh, mm-hmm. One more aspect of this migrant story, though, and you briefly mentioned it earlier, an actual positive story. We have councils, yeah. local councils up and down the country, fighting the government in court to prevent hotels in their areas from being turned over to the government to house these migrants because diversity is such a strength, apparently, just not in their backyard. (laughs) You know, people are having their weddings cancelled at these hotels. They book their weddings months in advance. This is the biggest day of their life in many cases. They get Mm -hmm. a phone call from the hotel saying, oh, sorry, we've turned the entire hotel over to migrants. Your wedding is cancelled. Your life plans are ruined. We've got employees working at these hotels, being fired left, right and centre, because as he mentioned, Serco has to bring in its own trained staff because of all the bedlam that these migrants cause. But there was one hotel owner in Kent who stood up and said no to this. In fact, I think there were two cases. You you, meant, you yeah. made a video about another one. Tell us what happened yeah. in those instances. Yeah, the second hotel was the Hatters Hotel in Lincolnshire in Skegness and uh, uh, it, it was quite interesting because there are two different groups who are fighting back. One is the actual hotel owners, and uh, these ones are just patriotic people, and they say they are concerned about what, what this could do to the area, and they're concerned about their own um, guests and customers who have their weddings and everything else. But some of the councils, they are the hypocrites, because as you said, they are saying, that, well, we, we need to open our doors like Gary Lineker and all these guys and celebrities, 
But then they say, but not in my backyard. And I said, where are you going to send them? So if I was the Home Office, I would just basically just put everyone in all these uh, liberal areas like Hackney and Islington and Camden and just, just say, shut up. Uh, but it, it is quite important because uh, one of the issues around this whole thing is um, just like the, the whole the climate militant stuff that's going on, I'm guessing we're, we're gonna, we might talk about it in, 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 yeah. after this, is uh, so many issues that um, people like yourselves and you know now and me over the last few years have been talking about all these concerns. People said, oh, we don't care about this. Uh, the, main, the mainstream people said, oh, you're just loonies because it's not really, a, it's never going to get anywhere because no one's actually listening to you. But all these issues are now affecting directly uh, normal people. So whether it's that, you know, the, the parents who want to take their kids to, the, to school and the, the road is blocked or whether, you know, someone wants to have a wedding in a hotel, but they can't be, or they're homeless and they're waiting for a house. So all these issues are now directly affecting people who some of them might not even watch the news. So they might not even be interested in politics, but they're now feeling it. And so the political establishment, if they're not careful, they're going to see a big explosion, the worst than 2016 that America saw and Britain saw. Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me. By subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.